So I thought what I'd do is a little programming exercise. Apparently one test that people still use for programming interviews, now this has got to be the worst way to interview a programmer ever, is to make them do a FizzBuzz program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do FizzBuzz as a programming exercise. Hopefully um, this will mean that no one ever has to do a FizzBuzz as a programming exercise again because I can't imagine a worse way of checking whether someone can actually code the type of architectures and various other things that you need someone to code in the real world. But let's have a look at this. So what I've done is I went, I've taken this um, spec for the FizzBuzz program from the wiki that you saw there. So let's just put this out. So I'm making sure I know what I need to do. So this says write a program that prints numbers from 1 to 100. So we've got a, a defined input scope. But for multiples of 3, print fizz instead of the number. Let's split out these requirements. And for multiples of 5, print buzz. For numbers which multiple of both 3 and 5, print fizz buzz. So what does that mean? That means... So for... What is it? 1, we'd get 1... Two, we'd get two, and the next multiple of three and five, I guess, is what fifteen. That's the first one. Equals fizz buzz, and within there, there's multiples of three as twelve. Now, I guess where it becomes challenging is that uh, fifteen is a multiple of three, so people might get confused. Fifteen is a multiple of five, people might get confused. So I've got a basic spec. We've expanded this out into data. And what is 100? 100 is multiple of 5, so that would be a buzz. Does 9 go into 3? No, that's fine. So I've got a rough set of examples. Now I'm ready to start. Now I suspect that most programmers, when they're doing this, do not um, split out examples. I suspect that most programmers, when they do this, did not split this into multiple lines. So I have a slightly different approach to this already, simply because I've, I've got a testing viewpoint on this, but I'm not expecting the testing viewpoint to make much of a difference. So I need to start with test. So let's see. At test. Uh, so let's see, FizzBuzz converter leaves normal numbers alone. Right, so one would come back as one, because I've quite I've got in my mind. Right, so now I've got the unit in there, so now we can start. So what I've got in mind is I've got the notion of a uh, FizzBuzz converter, which I can ask it to convert, convertor, I can ask it to convert numbers into the FizzBuzz representation. So let's have a new FizzBuzz converter. I'll call that Fizz buzz equals new fizzbuzz converter. So let me create this class, create class, source main java, let's do that. And that's the wrong way around, isn't it? It's compendiumdev.co.uk, so let's... And that's going to be a fizzbuzz variable. Okay, so what I want to say is, cert dot cert equals and I want this to return a string one when I do fizzbuzz.convert one. And let's create that string. Um, so leave it as that. So I've got some code that is syntactic correct. So I've got a failing test, and also this is telling me that I've got a spelling error in there. Fizzbuzz converter. There we go. So we've got rid of the spelling error as well. And we've got a failing test, so now let's make this work. I'm just going to control click into converter. So I'm passing in one. What I want it to do is return one as a string. Let's try the test again. Okay, so now we're well on the way to having a FizzBuzz converter. Now I could <coughs> create another test, right? Because people like to have single assertions in here, but because my test is called leaves normal numbers alone, I'm not going to do that. So I might well fail 
the um, program assignment right at this point in time because I'm putting multiple assertions into my test. So what we've demonstrated is it can't handle all normal numbers because we've only or all normal numbers because we've only coded it for one. So what I need to do is convert that into turn string dot value of to convert to fizzbuzz. Great. So now I want to handle the special case where it is multiples of three. So a multiple of three would be three and that should return fizz. Did I say capitals? Right, capitals fizz. Okay, so let's run that, it should fail. Okay. So I suspect people might not pass this challenge if they don't know what the modulus operator does. So if to convert fizzbuzz modulus three, uh, it's a multiple of three equals zero because modulus returns the um, remainder. So three goes into three one time, remainder zero. So that should return um, fizz. Now that will also fail on 15, right? Because, uh, well, it won't fail on 15. On 15, it will return fizz when it should be returning fizz buzz. So let's run that test, see if that works now. Great. So let's put in a test for can convert multiples of five. And on five, it returns buzz. Is that what the requirement says? Multiples of five, print, buzz. Now, note it says the word print. We haven't covered print yet. So we haven't done anything to print things. I, I'm just creating a fizzbuzz converter at this point in time. So I'm getting the basis in there. I imagine that my print routine would cycle over all the numbers, call the converter, and then print the result of the converter. That's what I've got in my head. So I'm gonna put in five in there. Let's run this. And it fails, so we go off the converter. So if modulus five is zero, then return buzz. So it's all quite simple at this point in time. If you don't delete, close the test. Control Shift F10. Okay. So what I haven't done for a while is run all the tests. So I'm just going to run that. Great. So I think this is the point where the challenge starts to come in. So now we have to do for number search models of both three and five print fizzbuzz. Assuming in my head, a multiple of both three and five is actually a multiple of 15. Is that right? <laughs> so this is where it all falls down. So we put in 15, this should fail because we haven't coded in fizzbuzz. Right, so let's go in. So I think this is probably where we would get the complexity because now we have to go, well, is it a multiple of five? Um, return buzz, okay, I don't want a return buzz at this point. I need to flag, need a flag. What I'm gonna try is I'm gonna assume that every multiple of three and five is actually a multiple of 15. So three and five, so the first one would be 15, the second one would be 30, the third one would be 35. So multiple of 15, and then I would just return fizz buzz. Okay, so what I haven't done is print it. What I also haven't done is I don't have, like in my head, <clears throat> that makes sense. But in my head, I'm nervous because I haven't got a full oracle for something that is a constrained set of one to a hundred. It'd be easy enough for me to see a, a output list and just double check that 
my understanding of multiple of 3 and 5 is actually um, dividing by 15. So at this point, I can finish the app. I'm going to do that just by writing a little test. Java class um, actual fizz buzz app. I'm going to map it as a test because I'm not going to write a main method. I could write a main method, but I'm not going to. At test, so I might fail the programming example because I don't know how to write a main method. At public um, output the hundred fizz buzzies. Let's call that. For, oops, public void, that's why. For int, I'm going to do i because I'm in a hurry. i is less than or equal to 100. i plus plus. Now, in theory, I might make a mistake there that i to 100 equals 1, start 1. Then, so what we want is a fizzbuzz, which is a new fizzbuzz converter. And then we want to do system.out.println fizzbuzz.convert i run that. There we go, job done. Clearly interview passed. Now, at this point, I don't have an oracle to compare that to. So we'd have to go through manually by hand, looking at this. Um, if we had an oracle, if we easy get one up, then we could do that. But at this point, I think most programmer interviews stop at that point. We've got a fizz buzz. We know roughly what it is. Da -da -da. That's not where a tester is going to stop. Right? A tester at this point is going to be nervous because we don't know, we haven't got an easy way of checking this. This method here isn't really a method. I could copy paste this into a main method, it'd be an application, but I wouldn't really have tested that. So I've got a thing that I haven't tested that we're relying on for the future. Now we do have tests around our converter. So we've got the basics covered there. We've got code coverage pretty much <laughs> of our app, 100% there. Um, but I think a tester at this point would be nervous. So it might be worth spending a little bit of time looking at how a tester might then proceed with this. But the development part, TDD of FizzBuzz, is pretty much done at this point, I think. We FizzBuzzed, and you can check the results for yourself if you want to. Next video, how, what does a paranoid tester do to actually convince himself that this works?